All right, everyone, back here for another walking video. So based on the comments on the last video, you guys like these walking videos again. For those of you that don't know, this is where the YouTube channel started. Mondays were my worst performing days. And I came on here and made a video every single Monday to help improve my trading. And now Mondays are my best performing days and I kind of use it as recap days. So you guys like the scenery, you guys like the walking. Uh, like I said, I'm moving to Florida full time uh, on Friday. So this will be the last time walking in this scenery and we'll have a new scenery in Florida. So let's talk about the market. Let's talk about what's been working, what's not been working and how you can improve your trading. So the biggest news of the market lately has been Tesla, right? Tesla has been beaten down and beaten down and beaten down like crazy. It was the only stock this year red. And not only was it red, it was down 40% at the peak, right? At the height of its downtrend, right? So let's kind of talk about what's going on now because Tesla has reversed to being green on the year in less than a week. So Tesla is up, I think in 10 days, up 40%. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about what's going on. Let's talk about my trades and let's talk about what you could do to improve your trading. So for those that don't know, I've been trading for about 10 years now. I've made over $8 million trading. I have all my broker statements, everything on the website. So this is kind of my, uh, my recap of the intuition that I'm seeing from the markets, right? So the thing is that Tesla has been performing poorly because interest rates have gone up, which makes it very, very hard to afford car loans. And number two, there was a lot of speculation based on Elon Musk's pay package. At the beginning of the year, he said that if he doesn't have at least 20% of Tesla, or was it 15 or 20% of Tesla, that he's going to focus on his other ventures like SpaceX, The Boring Company, and XAI more. And that caused a lot of investors, long-term investors, to panic. Also, their delivery numbers were coming in very, very weak, which caused a negative story to be out. The way the stock market works is they price in future earnings. So the reason why Nvidia is worth $3 trillion is because the market is putting a multiple on its future sales, right? So in the case of these stock market companies, most of the companies are growth companies. So if your company is growing, that multiple increases and the future earnings expectations increase as well. So for the example of Tesla, when you had two quarters of downtrending delivery numbers, when you had the negative headline of Elon Musk's pay package, when you have the negative interest rates that are rate rising, that are causing loans to get higher, it was nearly a perfect storm for a downtrend on Tesla. Plus, a lot of investors, whether it be retail investors or institutional investors, are looking for the next best thing, which is AI, right? So a lot of the money this year has been poured into the AI stocks, SMCI, Nvidia, Google, Microsoft, right? So lo and behold, Tesla was just selling off and selling off and selling off. Something you also have to make sure of is Tesla, a lot of the people that trade Tesla are trading based on margin, right? So they're all in, all in, all in, and they're borrowing money on top of it to get even bigger in their position. And the way it works on margin is, for example, most brokers charge or they allow you to have two times leverage overnight. Some sketchier brokers allow three, four, five times leverage overnight. So in the case of Tesla, if you're fully leveraged in, four times leverage and the stock goes down 25%, you lose all of your money. All of it is gone because you're leveraged in. So I think in the scenario of Tesla, there was a lot of traders that were using leverage on the stock that also caused the panic. Now, what changed on this stock and what is changing right now? So there needs to be a catalyst. There needs to be a reason for stocks to move up and for stocks to move down or else they will be flatlined. There's multiple catalysts that could happen on a stock. One of the biggest catalysts is earnings. Earnings happens every single quarter on a company. So no matter what, every single stock is gonna have a catalyst, catalyst every quarter. Number two is maybe press releases, maybe news, whatever. So for a stock to continue to go higher or for a stock to continue to go lower, there needs to be some sort of catalyst. So what is the catalyst that reversed Tesla 
from being minus 40% on the year to being green on the year in about 10 days. Number one was the pay package. So I made a video a couple weeks ago, and I'll try to link it at the end of this video, about Elon Musk's shareholder vote and the pay package. If he got his pay package approved by the investors, he would get options for Tesla, which would raise his percentage stake enough to give him the power and the control that he wants to grow Tesla into a multi-trillion dollar company. Also, he wanted to move the uh, incorporation from Delaware to Texas because the Delaware judges are kind of using political schemes to kind of get at him. Anyway, so that was the first major catalyst. The first major catalyst is the shareholder vote passed overwhelmingly, giving him more stock of the company, giving him more ownership of the company, which will allow him to keep his promise, which is to grow Tesla into one of the most valuable companies in the world ahead of Apple, NVIDIA, uh, and Microsoft. That was catalyst number one. That allowed the stock to go from minus 40% on the year to about minus 25% on the year. Now, what was the next catalyst that came out? It was Tesla's delivery numbers. So for two quarters in a row, maybe even longer, they've been having negative delivery growth, which means that they've been delivering less cars than the previous quarter, which is not signaling growth, it's signaling slowdown, right? So this upcoming uh, delivery number that came out, not only did they beat their delivery number, right, which was very, very important, but there's something else if you missed. Their energy storage and distribution business quadrupled, quadrupled, right? So now, not only did they reverse the two quarters of negative delivery growth, they now have a entirely new area to make money, which is energy storage and energy distribution. Now here's what's important. What do AI systems need a shitload of except for computing power, except for chips? They need a shitload of electricity, man. A shitload of electricity. And what is the number one company storing and distributing electricity? Tesla. So that catalyst, within the catalyst of their delivery numbers, is what caused institutional investors to be like, wait a second, maybe Tesla actually isn't just an electric car company. They are an energy company. They are an AI company. And like I said, they have an upcoming catalyst, which is the robo-taxi event. So now this news led to the stock being from minus 25% to plus two, three, four percent on the year. Because now big money hedge funds big money institutions are starting to realize that not only does Tesla make money from their cars, they're making money from the electricity business, the energy business, the AI business, Optimus, RoboTaxi, and whatever else they come out with, right? So that reason, that hidden catalyst within the delivery numbers, the energy storage and distribution business that quadrupled is now what's getting people excited because now, wait a second, not only is vehicle deliveries growing again, this new business is growing. And by the way, there's RoboTaxi coming out and Optimus coming out. I don't know about you guys, but I can't wait to buy an Optimus, right? So that's kind of what's causing Tesla to go up. Now add some gasoline to that fire is, I don't know if you saw, but there was news that came out over the weekend that 20% of all hedge funds, 20% of all hedge funds we're short Tesla before the delivery numbers. So now you have a short squeeze catalyst as well. This is what propelled Tesla from uh, split adjusted prices of $50 to $400 was the short squeeze. Everyone was betting against the company. Now, once again, once again, that same catalyst is happening again, where everyone is short the stock. 20% of hedge funds are short the stock. I'll put a link in the description to that uh, as well so you can read the report. But 20% of hedge funds are short the stock ahead of what was not only a great delivery number, but also a hidden catalyst of the energy growth and storage business, 
that is going to lead to the next revolution of profits because all these AI systems need electricity and compute to run. And where better than freaking Tesla? So that's kind of what's going on with Tesla. For me personally, I'm not an investment advisor, but I'm a long-term holder in Tesla. I very much so believe in the company. I think that they're gonna be the next most valuable company in the world. And people are already saying with Optimus and RoboTaxi, it might be worth $3 trillion, which would be three times the size of Nvidia, three times the size of Microsoft, and three times the size of Apple. And I think it's possible. So that's Tesla. So what do you guys think is the reason for the short squeeze on Tesla? Leave your comments down below. I'm the guy that reads and responds to the comments. So I'm very interested to hear your thesis. Now let's talk about trading, okay? So something that I wanna kind of talk about in today's lesson is the power of sizing, okay? So when I was trading back at SMB Capital, um, there was some very, very talented traders there. There was traders that were making hundreds of thousands of dollars a day, right? And me coming in, <laughs> I was trying to be competitive with those people and make the same amount of money, but I learned a lot of lessons along the way. So when I first started trading there, I was trading based on trying to show off, trying to brag and trying to compete with these guys. Now I would make 50,000, lose 40,000. I would make 30,000, lose 60,000. Make 100,000, lose 20,000. And it was up and down and up and down and up and down and it led to so much, so much stress. And I would look at the end of the month and I'd be barely making any money, right? So I had a talk with Dr. Brett Steenbarger, who is the number one trading coach in the world. Uh, he was my training coach for about a year. So shout out Dr. Brett if you're watching this. Um, and he told me to basically just size down, right? And first I was like, how, the, how, am I gonna, how am I supposed to make more money if I just size down? And what he told me was very, very special. He's like, if you size down, you'll actually make more money because you will be more patient with the stock. You'll be less emotional on the stock. What we kind of decided is to find a trigger that causes you to kind of start going on tilt. So how many times have you been in a trade and your heart starts racing? Your heart starts pounding. You're like, you start breathing a little bit heavier. Dr. Brett told me that that is your body giving you a signal that you are either in too big on the trade or you're in the wrong trade. So we use that as a trigger. So whenever I feel anxious, whenever I feel nervous, whenever I start to feel panicking, it either means that I'm in the wrong trade or I'm oversized on the trade. In my scenarios, it'd be oversizing on the trade. So I would use my body's natural reflex to tell me that I'm in the wrong trade. So that's number one is identifying that. Now, what happens when you size down? So sizing down allows you to be more patient. It allows you to be less emotional on the stock. So for example, let's say you're trading, I don't know, a thousand shares. If you put 50 shares on the stock, you could go get a burrito, you could go leave the house, you don't really care about it. But if you're using a thousand shares and that's your max size, you're like, I'm zoned in, I'm focused in, I need another coffee to focus on this trade. And it's a very, very different trade. Although the stock will be doing the same thing, you as the human participant react differently to that setup, right? So for me, sizing down has allowed me to not only make more money, but to be more patient on trades. And after a very long vacation that I took, my goal was till from now until the end of the year to size down around 50 to 70%. Why? I wanna focus on being more happy in my life. I wanna focus on less stress in my life. I wanna realize that you know less is more. I'm a very competitive person and I see all of these profits on Twitter and Instagram and it kind of gets me into that competitive mode. But reality is a lot of those profits, a lot of those things are all fake. They're all Photoshop, it's all bullshit. So I'm trying to compete with fake numbers. So at the end of the day, when I came back from vacation last week, I sized down and lo and behold, in about one week, I'm up $22,000. It's about three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 I made. And then on Friday, I had a $10,000 day. And today I made like a couple hundred bucks, right? So I remind myself that $20,000 a week is $80,000 a month, which is about a million dollars a year with no stress. So I'm very, very happy making a million dollars a year with no stress. And I kind of want to go back to that mindset and that, uh, that feeling of just being stress-free. So that's why I'm coming on here and making more videos. I want to not over trade or force trades during the middle of the day. That's why I'm trying to focus more on making content, whether it be Instagram reels, 
whether it be TikTok content, whatever it be, just so that I have a reason to step away from the markets. Because if you allow yourself, the markets will take over your life. And I'm trying to reward myself with positive reinforcement. So for example, if I'm trading well and I'm making money and I'm sticking to the process, I'm wiring out a percentage of those profits. I'm wiring out a percentage of those profits to reinforce the fact that if I keep trading the process well, if I keep respecting the process, I'm gonna get myself a paycheck. Whereas if you get bailed out and you're in a bad trade and somehow, some way you get lucky and survive that trade, that is going to reinforce bad habits onto you, right? And it's gonna make you wanna keep doing that so you could keep getting bailed out. So my goal from now until the end of the year is to make more of these videos, to size down, provide lessons, and every time that I stick to the process and I do the right thing, I'm gonna wire out money and reward myself. So the format I wanna use for these videos is talking about overall market sentiment, any breaking or upcoming news about the market, and then talking about my trade specifically. So, so far you guys have been liking the videos. If you guys could leave a like and leave a comment on the video, it really helps the channel grow. And I would love to hear your feedback on not only Tesla, but my trading smaller uh, recap and any other video topics or recaps that you want to hear of, of either later this week or next week. So thanks everyone for sticking with me. I'm gonna put all the appropriate links down below and I'll see you again on the next video. Thanks.